Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to give you a general introduction to the stockholders' equity section of the balance sheet. Let's take a look. So first off, um, stockholders' equity, it gets its own section of the balance sheet, usually the last section after your assets and then your liabilities. It is often under a larger header called liabilities and stockholders' equity, and that's largely related to the accounting equation, which states that a has to equal L plus S E, assets equal liability plus shareholders equity. So often what companies do is they total their assets and then they also total their liabilities and, and, and stockholders equity. So you see the larger header, but within that larger header, there will be the liability section and then very distinctly pointed out, there will be a stockholders equity section. Now, what are you gonna find in the stockholders equity section? Well, the first thing that you're gonna see is the actual stock of the company, okay? So there could be various types of stock. As you see in this example, there's about four different lines of different types of stock that the company has. Typically, it's some combination of preferred and common stock, but then you'll see this company in this case also has something called exchangeable stock or special voting stock. Those kind of things aren't normally um, uh, topics covered in say like an introductory level accounting course. So you've got the stock section, that stock is also known as the paid in capital of the company, PIC, paid in capital, because that is the capital investment that investors have paid into the company. Then you'll see something called additional paid in capital on most um, balance sheets. Additional paid in capital represents the amount of money you got from investors, not because that was the intrinsic value of the stock you issued, but because market forces gave even more value to your stock, right? Supply, demand, and, and ex expectations about future cash flows generated by your company basically valued your stock higher than, than whatever you set for its intrinsic, intrinsic value. Therefore, any money that you collect beyond the intrinsic value because you are issuing stock in the open market is known as additional paid in capital, usually abbreviated APIC. Also in stockholders' equity, you will see the retained earnings of the company. Retained earnings is just the accumulated net income of the company over time. So accumulated net income. So every accounting period when the income statement closes, the revenues and expenses are netted together and dumped into the retained earnings account, essentially updating retained earnings to reflect new net income. You might also see something called OCI other comprehensive income. Now, in this particular example, it's not called other comprehensive income, it's called accumulated other comprehensive loss. Um, and that's simply because it's a, it's a negative in this situation. But when it's a positive, it's called accumulated other comprehensive income, or I should put the A here, AOCI for accumulated other comprehensive income. Um, your comprehensive income arises due to things like um, fair value exchanges in your pensions, foreign currency, investments, things of that nature. Nothing I'm going to get into detail here. Just know that if you see this in a stockholder's equity um, section of a balance sheet, that's what it's showing you. It's, it's essentially gains and losses that would otherwise go on the income statement, but haven't really met the threshold to actually be recorded in net income yet. And so they get dumped here in stockholder's equity. So those are all your main components. You have your paid in capital, your additional paid in capital, your retained earnings, and your net income. And stockholders equity is typically totaled. And then as I mentioned earlier, it is then typically combined with liabilities to allow for investor comparison between assets and the combined total of liability and equity. Now, just a few other things that I do wanna point out, variations that you might see within a shareholders equity section of any given um, um, balance sheet. Um, just as I talked about the accumulated other comprehensive income, I showed you in the example, it was accumulated other comprehensive loss, right? Well, the same thing can happen with your retained earnings. So if instead of having net income, you have year over year over year net losses such that your retained earnings is negative, that is typically called an accumulated deficit rather than retained earnings. So that's right here. So when you see this on a, on, on a stockholder's equity section of a balance sheet, know that that is retained earnings. It's just negative retained earnings. Um, also, when you're in a really bad shape where your entire shareholder's equity section turns negative, it can get renamed to shareholder's deficit. 
And so you'll notice they did that here. Shareholders deficit, total shareholders deficit, total liabilities and shareholders deficit. It's just shareholders equity. It's just highlighting the fact that it's it's negative. It's, it's bad right now. Um, we didn't see it in the example on, on the other page, and, and, and it's not in this, this, this example either. But if you see treasury stock in a stockholders equity section, treasury stock is stock that the company has bought back from the investors. That is a contra equity account rather than an equity account. So all your regular stock, preferred stock, common stock, and even some of your special stocks that you see, those are equity accounts. Treasury stock, because the company paid money to buy it back, is a contra equity. It actually reduces your shareholders' equity. And then the last thing that I just want to say, because I think I've even done it a little bit in this, in this presentation, um, whether you hear the name stockholder or stockholders' equity or shareholder or shareholders' equity, we're really all talking about the same thing. We're talking about the same ownership section of the balance sheet. We're talking about the same owners of the company. Sometimes they're called stockholders. Holders, sometimes they're called shareholders, um, but, but they are basically one and the same. All right, so that's it for your introductory to the, uh, it, sorry, introduction to the shareholders equity section of the balance sheet. I hope you found this helpful, and I hope you join me for another video.